Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm uh, welcome back to the class. So today I'm going to talk about pol uh, assignment and regulator and also self tuner. So um, the pol assignment and regulator will be today. Self tuner will do it uh, maybe in the next class. Right. Um, this is pol assignment is one of adaptive control. It is a it is a method on how you can actually control a system. Uh, when the system transfer function is actually changing all the time, okay, or maybe changing uh, at a, a certain frequency or a certain time, okay. So this is how we're going to do a very simple uh, how do we do how we can still control the system when the parameter of the system changing. Okay, let's have a look at the fundamental parts. <clears throat> you have seen uh, a response where we have. Uh, Output of y t okay is equals to b over a. B over a is the transfer function representing the system, and the input of the system is u t okay. So if I take that uh, equation a multiply with sorry the transfer function a here at the denominator, if I take that and I apply I apply with my uh, multiply with my output, so I will get a y is equals to b u okay so then i will put the poly uh, similarly if uh, the previous class you've seen that the a and y uh, sorry a and b is actually the representation in a polynomial form isn't it so if i put in the in the polynomial form here okay uh, b z minus 1 1 minus a z minus 1 okay if you look at this uh, polynomial i've changed it a little bit isn't it last time i'm using uh, most of the time i'm using b1 z minus 1 over 1 plus a1 z minus 1 okay so i'm just going to show you that that 1 plus a it can be 1 minus so it's up to your decision when you actually design the controller okay so sometimes you found out that the value of a is actually the value of a is all, all uh, is negative all the time so you can uh, change the equation to be 1 minus a z minus 1 instead of a1 plus a so it's okay all right as long as you know what you define in the beginning when you uh, start doing your uh, your your system identification all right so when you want to do your system identification you have seen last time that you need to have the data isn't it so you need to actually apply some input to the system and get the response of the system with the u and y the collections of data then only you can do your system identification all right so what happened is that when you want to collect the data most of the system they are continuous time uh, data isn't it they are continuous uh, system so what do we do is that we're going to convert it into a digital data okay uh, it's a it's a digitization by having some sample. so instead of taking the data uh, one hour for example Okay, I'm going to take it within one hour, but I'm going to sample it every one second. This is simply means uh, sampling. Okay, so instead of the data is collected continuously, we're just going to sample it. So I'm going to take one data every second, for example, or one data every millisecond. So then you get, you're going to get a collections of, uh, uh, um, collections of discrete data rather than continuous data. That is as simple as that. Okay, and if you remember, we can use our zero or the whole that that is your z minus one, isn't it? Zero or the whole. Okay, so I'm going to put that zero or the whole there. So it means to say I'm going to collect the data. Okay, and I'm going to sample it and then I'm going to uh, identify the data with the previous data as well. So it's actually a samples of uh, just a, a matter of getting uh, the response of with uh, supply input you. What is the supply output you? But now it is in time domain. Uh, sorry, in a discrete data. Okay, so that's it. All right. So this is the first. If it's, if I have a first order system, if you remember from your control, uh, basic control system, first order can be represented by uh, the parameter of a can be a is equals to exponential of negative t uh, divided by uh, the time constant tau this the the t here is the time constant and that a is the transient behavior of your system okay so this is a first order system so if i have a first order system there are two behaviors that i need to have a look at it okay and that is, one of them is the time constant okay and the other one is how stable your system are right 
these are all the uh, the parameter uh, or the transient response of a first order system okay so in that is in but but this this uh, first order system is represented in time domain so instead of having time domain we want to convert that into frequency uh, sorry into a discrete okay into a discrete data so that's what we're going to have okay so from our previous equation there you're going to see that b is equals to 1 minus a multiplied by k all right so that's how we're going to get that's how we're going to actually sample uh, uh, our data uh, and this is the behavior of first order system right so for having this a uh, first order system b is equals to 1 minus a multiplied by k okay then we're going to have our time sampling the sampling time is t is equals to uh, 1 plus t1 z minus 1 okay that is your sam uh, t uh, sampling time all right so i'm going to uh, i'm going to use this later on for the next uh, application i will show you in terms of example what does this mean okay right so the control objective when you have first order system this is how your first order system responded so when you apply input let's say your input is a step input okay let's say it is a step input i want it to be that responder that is your input a uh, 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 um, constant step input okay so then your system will respond according to this according to this uh, signal here so that when you have the system responding it can be slower maybe this is the initial response right so that is the original uh, response then when you close the loop when it open loop and then when you close the loop maybe the response will be faster and maybe the response will actually have some improvement in terms of the uh, error you can see okay when it's a closed loop and when it's open loop maybe there's a different there right so the second line the black line is actually when you have a closed loop system right so this is the this is the controller function you need to actually uh, design a controller so that that error being eliminated okay so the use of feedback control can alter the speed of your system response at the same time maybe when you use a controller when you apply a controller on your feedback okay the error of your system can be reduced so this is why we need to design the controller all right so it's simply saying that uh what i'm trying to say is that if i have a system let me oops sorry let me just um uh, show that what happened in the beginning let's say i have a system this is what i need okay the system to respond based on my input it's a reference uh, of a uh uh, 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 unit feedback okay it's a step input with a unity uh, input okay what i want my system to do is actually to get of course i want my system to be very perfect like that isn't it okay but maybe i i won't get that so maybe in the beginning when it is an open loop i get something like that which having a lot of error so I don't want that error, so I design a closed loop system. When I design a closed loop system, I need to put a controller because otherwise the error will be more. I can show you that. I can prove to you when you close the loop of the system without controller, the error will be more. Okay, for first order system. So you need to close loop the system. At the same time, you need to apply some controller to it. Okay, so that the control will be signal will be something like that. Okay, so this part is good because you can see that the error has been eliminated okay however you still have the delay there isn't it in terms of response okay so the function of your controller one is actually to remove the error and number two is actually to design the system so that it is very fast response of course if you design the controller better the response can be faster and faster okay so that value of response and also time is actually related to your transient uh, parameters that I've shown in the previous slide okay so let's have a look at it so uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to change a uh, closed loop pole uh, in a, in some way and the response of yp yt is correspond to the uh, reference yt at steady state so this is your objective of control uh, for first order system so how can we do it so let's have a look at your control system in the beginning when it, it was the open loop maybe the system looks like the previous when i have in the previous uh, 
slide. This is an open loop system. Okay, when we have B over A here. Right? So that's your system. When oh, the B looks very weird, isn't it? Let's redraw that. So that's the, the transfer function of system for open loop. So when you apply the input and then you come up with, uh, you collected the output, you find out that the system is having error. Okay, it doesn't respond like your what you want for your input. Okay, so you know that, okay, I need to design a controller. So what you're going to do is you're going to do a closed loop control, like what I have actually explained previously. Put some reference signal, okay, into your input and then check what is the response now. But when I when we do this, guys, so for first order system, it's definitely going to give you a lot of error So when you do this, okay? So it's going to give you a lot of error, all right? So what you're going to do is you need to remove that error. When you do closed loop without, without controller, closed loop error, a uh, closed loop system will produce more error compared to open loop. Maybe I'll have a separate uh, uh, video later on explaining what happened when you close the loop without controller. I will show you uh, with data. Okay, how does the error become even more? I don't know why. It's how it's responded. Okay, it become more error. So this is not very good. Okay, it's not really very good. Why? When you close the system, error will be more. Okay, so you please remember that. So what you need to do is when you close the system, you need to design a controller. So what do you want to do with that controller? First, the objective is to remove the error. Second, to make sure the response may be faster. So can we do this? All right. So this is the proposed controller that I have here. Okay. So when we're going to put the control, the closed loop, I'm going to put a one controller there and another one controller there. Okay. So this is our new uh, idea on how we're going to design the controller. Okay. So this is our idea. Right. So uh, when we have... Uh, implement this transfer function into our transfer into our system. The transfer function of our system have changes. Previously, the transfer function of the system is as simple as this, isn't it? B over A multiplied by U. Okay, and uh, and then when you multiply with the polynomial, you have Y is equals to B over one. My I put one minus just now because it's a first order um coming from a first order system that A is having a minus signal. Okay. Right. Okay. So that's how the transfer function in the beginning. But now I put the H node and G node. Okay. So that H node and G node will uh, change your controller. So what happened to your controller now? The equation have become uh, something that I have here. How do I get that? Okay. So I can just simply uh, do this. Right. So the equation saying that y is equal uh, u is equals to sorry y is equals to b z minus 1 over 1 minus a1 z minus 1 multiplied by oh, sorry that's oh uh, yeah multiplied by u okay but u is equals to what is u from this uh, transfer function from, from this block diagram u is equals to i have r r multiplied by h isn't it r multiplied by h naught okay minus y multiplied by g node okay that's what happened here right so i have addition of signal here and here all right is that negative i think it's a is a i think it's a, a negative feedback sorry i forgot to put that can you put that later on in your set it's a negative feedback here okay is that right negative feedback yeah Okay, so that's what you have. Your u have changes to this equation here. u is equals to uh, negative g note, okay, plus h multiplied by r because that u is having now two input added into it in that summing point, okay. But what about that? Uh, can, can we then put that equation together? So when we put that equation together by substituting a u signal into this uh, equation, Okay, I'll substitute that U signal into that equation and replace the U uh, with R H naught minus Y G naught. So I will then derive into this uh, equation here. Okay, that will give me that equation. All right, so that is Y T is equals to B H Z minus 1 over 1 minus A B G, sorry, A minus B 
g naught z minus 1 multiplied by r. This is your new equation. All right. Okay. When you have the new, uh, when you have your characteristic, uh, sorry, your closed loop system equation, the most important part is that uh, for stability. Okay. So for stability, this is the most important part. Okay. So that part is known as characteristic equation. Why? Because characteristic equation will determine if your system is stable or not. When you want to design a controller, the first, uh, the first rules is that the system, the controller will ensure the system is still stable. Okay, so you cannot design controller and the system become unstable due to your design. Okay, so the first uh, regulation is that you need to make sure the system is stable. Okay, so how to ensure the system is stable when we have a stability, uh, when, when we want to talk about stability, all right, uh, in terms of um, Laplace, okay, Laplace domain, if you remember, stability is when you have all your poles on the on the negative side of your real time okay so do you do you remember that so maybe i can explain that in the next class okay what does it mean by stability okay so however when you talk about zero or the whole in z domain okay stability means the parameter of your z must be in unit uh, in a loop uh, sorry in a uh, unit circle okay so it is stable if the poles within the unit circle for z or the whole hang on okay it simply means hang on um oops right so in laplace for stable okay in laplace s domain uh, when i plot the laplace uh, s plane okay for real and imaginary i'm not sure if you remember this okay so poles must be on this side for the system to be stable isn't it okay so if the poles uh, happen on the other side then the system is unstable right i can show you later on in a different uh, class how the stability works okay however now i'm not using a zero or the uh, s domain isn't it i'm using zero uh, z domain for z domain okay when the system is stable is system is stable is when the poles is within the unit circle okay so this is a unit circle all right, so the poles have to be within the unit circle. All right, then it is actually uh, a stable system. All right, so in that case, I need to have um, my with that in mind, I'm going to design the system so that this part here is giving me uh, that equation. All right, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna find out what is that uh, z uh, what is my zero uh, my poles there. So if I take that, I put in my characteristic equation. This is characteristic equation, guys. Take the denominator of your closed loop transfer function and equate with zero. Okay, then I will have one minus a, sorry, one equals to a minus b g z minus one. Okay, of course, that z minus one is equivalent to, what is that? z minus one is equivalent to one over z, isn't it? Okay, so if I replace one over z there, okay, put that into this equation so of course i will have z is equals to a minus b g note okay so that's how it is right so that is your z uh, your pole all right z is your pole and z have to be within the unit circle all right so that is your pole okay so when i want to design the system right my trans my par my poles t1 is must be equals to a minus b g note okay and from there i can write my g note is equals to i can rewrite this equation okay and equate it of course i'm going to equate that with the t1 okay so t1 is equals to a minus t1 sorry g note is equals to a minus t1 divided by b so that's my design rules number one okay so this is to ensure stability of the system right the second one is that uh, when we want the system to have the error become zero you put the reference just now r so this is your r you want your system to be a uh, step input okay then of course you want the response to be 
having zero error, isn't it? When you have, when you want your system Y, the black color is Y. Okay, when you want your system to have Y equals to zero, so it means you want Y equals to your R. No, no, you don't want Y to be zero. You want the error to be zero. So you want Y to be equivalent to your R. So for just as simple as if I want a um, uh, feeling, I want to fill a tank with water. Okay, I want the level to be five meter. <clears throat> okay, so when I start filling the level of the tank with uh, water, my reference is five meter, isn't it? So when I find out what is the current response, of course, the current response is the current level. The current level is increasing slowly until it will reach five meter. Okay, so of course, when I have it uh, close, very close to five meter. I will start to design, the controller start to design maybe to slow down the filling in, isn't it? Because I want it to be exactly 5 meters. So, uh, we will start to close the valve maybe, okay? The controller will start to reduce the intakes of water when it started to reach uh, 5 meters. And slowly, it will then reach 5 meters. Okay, when it start to reach 5 meters, we want it to be immediately stopped, isn't it? Okay, so you need to slow down at that level, isn't it? When you, you start, your controller maybe start to close the valve bit by bit so that the water will be exactly at 5 meters. If you don't do that, your controller will overshoot. Okay, so when it's overshoot, in terms of, when, when it overshoot in terms of a water, it will not remove, isn't it? It will become more error, isn't it? Your, your system will be more, having more error compared to your reference. So, then you need to avoid that as well. You don't want that your system to be that overshoot. Okay, so you need to slow down there and then design the control so that it doesn't have any error. Okay, so that is your challenge. Okay, so you want it to be stopped immediately at that level, for example. Okay, so then you what you want is actually you want your Y is, is exactly equal to your reference. Your output must be equal to your reference. So how to do that? When I put Y must be equals to R, okay, and R is of course a constant value. We don't want R to change, okay. So the closed loop gain must be Y over R is equals to this. So if, I, if I look at this equation again, you remember this equation again? Okay, so how to make Y equals to R, okay, just uh, if I have that Y multiplied by R, See this? Okay. If I take that R, I divide it here. Okay. Bring R to the other side. Okay. So then you don't have that R, isn't it? Anymore, isn't it? So that is your equation that I have here. Okay. Y equals to R and equate that with 1. Okay. So if Y equals to R, R, it has to become 1, isn't it? Okay. So it's coming from this equation. So if Y over R, it's equals to 1. All right. So then this is your uh, transfer function when y equals to r uh, sorry when y equals to r so it means y over r is equals to one so your transfer function is that b h naught z minus one over one minus a b g naught z minus one equals to one all right <clears throat> okay when you do uh, when you do a steady state error when you want to remove steady state error when, uh, if you remember for your control system, when you want to have a steady state error eliminated, you are using what we call a uh, final value theorem. Okay, so please uh, have a go, uh, have a look at this final value theorem. Okay, final value theorem states that, state that for time domain, okay, you want to have that final value theorem when T is approaching infinity. Okay, in S domain, you want to do that when S equals to zero. However, you are not now in time domain or S domain. You are now in Z domain. So for Z domain, you want that value for final value theorem. You want that value to be taken when Z is equals to one. Okay, when Z equals to one, that is the uh, the steady state of your time do uh, Z domain. Okay. So if I take that value, I put z equals to 1 into this equation. So of course, this become 1, this become 1. Why? Because uh, z minus 1 is equals to 1 over z, right? 
Okay, so if I put, if I substitute z equals to 1, so of course that z minus 1 will become 1 over 1. Okay, so 1 over 1, so it means z minus 1 will be 1. Okay, so then that equation will become, then I put this, uh, uh, this equation here, substitute z minus 1 equals to 1, and then equate it with 1 here. Okay, so you will then get the value of your h naught. Right, so H naught will be 1 minus A minus B G naught divided by B. Okay, so that's how you get the second design rules. Alright, so let me just show that again slowly and nicely. I have time, right? Okay, so first I want my Y equals to R. So I want my y over r equals to one. Okay, that's the uh, that's the desired condition for steady state error to become zero. Okay, I want the steady state error to become zero. Then, uh, knowing that, I will put the, the equation uh, this equation here. Okay. Then, this is in z domain. Therefore, uh, when z domain, you want to take the response as steady state means when z is approaching one. Okay. Simply the same as when time domain, this, this plot is in time domain. When time domain, I want to know the value when t is uh, become big and big, isn't it? I don't want to take the value at this point, isn't it? There is, a, uh, there is not really the steady state. So I, don't want, I do not know what is the, the time when it reached steady state. So I'm just going to say that the time is taken when t is become very big. Okay, but that is in time domain. If it's in Laplace domain, when t equals to infinity, it means s is equals to zero. Okay. Similarly, on that, when t equals to infinity, s equals to zero, z is equals to one. This is the same condition. All right. Okay. It just depends on your uh, state. So if I I I, I take that equation, put it here. Okay, and then substitute the value of z minus one equal to one. Okay, because of these design rules just now, because of that condition just now. So you're going to have B H naught over uh, 1 minus A minus B, okay, G naught, oh, hang on, okay, that you equate with 1, right? Okay, so take the denominator, multiply with 1, okay, you're going to have then H naught is equals to, uh, the denominator is 1 minus A minus B G naught, divided by your value of B naught again, or B. Uh, in this case, I use just B, isn't it? Not B naught. Oops. Okay. So that's how I got that design rules too. Okay, so this design rules too is important for your controller to have steady state error zero. The design rules one is for stability. The design rules two is for uh, steady state error zero. Or zero steady state error. Okay, so that is how you get the uh, two design rule for your adaptive control. So look at the controller, guys. So if you look at the controller G node and B and H node, it's a bit messy here. Let me erase that. Okay, if I look at two controller, okay, that controller is a function of A and B, isn't it? A and B. So that controller is depending on the value of your A and B, okay? So this is why this controller is suitable for adaptive control. Why? Because every time your parameter of system, which is A and B, changes, the value of your controller will be updated, okay? Your value of control will be actually improved based on updated, based on your parameter of your system. That is why this kind of controller is called uh, adaptive control because it is depending on the parameter of your system. So when you have a closed loop system and when you have your data taken all the time and then you can actually ask recursively square to update your data, update the value of your controller. Okay, so 
the when it's updating the value of a and b you can immediately put another loop uh, another of uh, mathematics in your matlab with the value of g and h because the value of g and h is depending on the value of your uh, transfer function the value of your uh, parameter of your system okay so this is why okay only thing is that here you have to find your t1 here of course you have to define what is your uh, poles all right so poles have to be within a unit circle so if poles is uh, within unit circle it means it cannot be, of course it cannot be less than zero it cannot be negative so it must be from zero to one it cannot be one because it's a critically uh, it can be one but that uh, one means it's uh, critically stable okay so if you look at the oh, i erase it already okay so if it's uh, equivalent to one then it is actually critically stable so the, the uh, this this value of t you decide okay it must be between zero and one okay t is actually your pose if you remember from the previous slide okay so have a look at this later on so this is actually a, a one type of uh, adaptive control so the idea is that you shift the open loop poles to some desired set of closed loop poles uh, by defining the value of t1 okay so of course that set of closed loop poles must be a stable pole okay 41 and then the second actually you uh, eliminate the error by having the input is equals to the output the input the output reference must be equals to the input given to the system all right so for your um, time domain all right when you have a first order system your transfer function or your closed loop uh, sorry your poles is defined as t is equals to one plus t one z minus one when you have second order transfer function your your uh, poles is defined as uh, t is equals to one plus t one z minus one plus t two z minus two this is your poles right okay but of course just now you need to actually define it uh, define it uh, within the unit circle so that it is uh, always stable right the the uh, poles of your system always stable so when you design for first order you're going to use this one when you design a uh, poles for your second order you're going to use the second one all right so i'm going to show it more later on for you okay all right in summary oh that's all no i have more slide but i don't think i can cover it within this class i will uh, record more session later on okay in summary for pole ass ass assignment, what you need to do is uh, shift the open loop pole to a desired set of closed loop poles, all right? And then the desired, side, uh, the desired set of closed loop poles are determined by uh, transient response, uh, or you can just uh, focus on transient response, okay? Either it's a first order or second order system, okay? So which one you want to do? So if it's a first order, use the equation for first order, if it's second order, use the equation for second order. And then determine, uh, you can also do it using frequency response shape, but uh, I always use it from uh, transient response, so it's easier. And then check on the stable response as well. So use, determine the, st the system, make sure it is a stable response. Okay, so that's all for the uh, poll assignment, right? So this is a, a method of assigning the poll. So I can give you one example before we leave. Um, this is the a bit more complicated. I'm going to do this in the next class, okay? So before that, let me just show you what happened. Uh, maybe, can I have? Hang on. I'll just give you one example, okay? How does it work? Okay, uh, let's say I have a system. Initially, the transfer function, the system looks like this. Okay, let's say I have B over 1 minus A here as my transfer function. I have input U and output Y. Okay, so what I want to do just now is I want to design a controller. Okay, so that controller is a pole assignment controller. Okay, so it's going to be B minus A and then Y, this is U. And I know I'm going to have the uh, controller here. I'm going to put one controller here, H note. 
and then another controller is on my uh, feedback which is G node okay let's see how, how do I know the response how do I know the parameter B and A maybe I do not know the parameter B and A isn't it so in order to get the parameter of B and A, I'm going to collect the input and output of the system, apply to the system input and collect the output of the system. From that, I'm going to use maybe least squared or recursive least squared or generalized least squared, whatever you have done before. Okay, from those value, I'm going to get predicted A and predicted B, isn't it? Okay, so predicted A and B will be used for my system because we do not know what is the value of A and B. Okay, so let's say we know the value now, uh, the value of A is maybe, I don't know, 10, B, maybe 5. Let's say, okay, all right, for, uh, for uh, an argument, all right. So how do we get that value? By having set of input and output and then apply into our least squared estimation uh, recursive or generalized least squared. And maybe after we do that, we got the input as such, uh, the transfer function as such, okay. So when you want to design the controller, you need this value of A and B, okay. Right, so if you remember just now the controller, the first uh, part, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you have your slide with you, isn't it? The first part, uh, let me just go back to the slide. Okay, the first design rules, if you remember just now, G node is equals to can you see my, you don't see my slide, isn't it? You see my notes, isn't it? Okay, I hope you see my slide. Yes, Professor. Okay, so it's okay. You can refer to slide. I'm referring to slide now, but you cannot see it. So you refer to your slide. I already uh, put it in the WhatsApp, isn't it? Okay, so the first gen uh, design rules is A minus T1 over B. Okay, and then the second design rule is H node is equals to 1 minus a minus B G note. Of course, you need to have your G note first because H is depending on the value of G note there, isn't it? Divide by, by B. Okay. So before we do that, we need to define our T, isn't it? Because this is required, right? So you need to change the value of your uh, pole. So the way we do it is normally we found out what is the actual value of pole of the system. And then if it's stable, then you can use that pose. Okay, if it's not stable, then you can change it to a stable form. For example, in the beginning, let's say, eh, let's say um, the pose is actually maybe unstable. It is there. Okay, maybe the value of pole is 2. Okay, so the way we do it is that we will then put that pole within the unit circle by maybe having it a formula of um, having it to become 1 over that value. So 1 over that value will be uh, so that it will be put into, transmit into the unit circle, put that pole here, okay. So one way of doing it is by changing it, changing that pole from, let's say T1 is equals to 2, you're going to change it into a stable pole where you have the value of T1 is equals to, uh, for, um, let, let's use that T, okay. So for T1, I'm going to make it stable, I'm going to put it as 1 over, 1 over T. Okay, so 1 over t is a stable pole, which is becoming 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is giving you 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is less than 1, so the system will be stable. Okay, the poles will be stable. So, in the beginning, the poles is that this is unstable. All right, not good. It's unstable. So, then I'm going to change it to 1 over that value. 1 over that value. And, of course, it has to be in modulus. So, if that value of pole in the beginning is a negative value of course it's not going to be negative value isn't it but if it's in time domain it's a negative value then you can make it make sure it's a positive and then it is one reciprocal of that value so the reciprocal of that value will definitely become make it become a, a positive uh, a stable one okay in this case i'm going to decide it's t1 is equals to 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.5 sorry so 0 0.5 so that's it so you just put for your g note it's as simple as having the value of your 10 minus 0 0.5 divided by your B is 5. Okay, so you can calculate that. What is that? Okay, that's your value of G naught. And then for your H naught is 1 minus 
the value of your A, which is uh, 10, minus the value of your B, which is uh, 5, multiplied by your value of uh, G note again, which is, what is the value of your G note? Whatever you got here, isn't it? Okay, can you, if you can calculate that 0 0.5, uh, 10 divided by, 10 divided by, uh, 10 minus 0 0.5 is 9.5. 9.5 divided by 5. What is 9.5 divided by 5? It's a 1.9. Okay, so let me just put that. Okay, I just have a 9.5 divided by 5, which is 1.9. Okay. So then you put that into this equation here. Is that right? The value that I got? You have your calculator, isn't it? With you. I'm running out of time. I'm going to stop. So it is 1 minus uh, the value of A, which is 10, minus the value of B, which is, what is B? 5, multiplied by 1.9 again. All right, divide by the value of B, which is Okay, so can you calculate that? It's uh, 5 multiplied by 9.9 Sorry? 0 0.1 0 0.1 Okay, let me just uh, have that check Again, 1 minus 0 0.5 divided by yeah, it's 0 0.1. It's correct. Okay, so then this is your controller. Okay, so then you're going to put that in your controller form. So H note is here, 0 0.1. Okay, that's your transfer function just now, which is B. What is your transfer function? B, uh, 5 divided by 1 minus, what is your A? It's What is your A? It's 10. Okay, that was your transfer function, isn't it? Okay, of course, there's a Z minus 1. I forgot. Z minus 1. Z minus 1. I forgot here. Guys, this this having Z minus 1. Don't forget, okay? It's not a value, uh, a constant value as your system, right? Okay, so then you have your Y. That Then this is your G node, which is in this case calculated to be 1.9. Okay, so how can they become, this become adaptive control? It because this part is changing, isn't it? It, it, is, it is an adaptive control because this part is keep on changing, isn't it? When this part changing, the value of A and B will be changed as well. So in your loop, in your control loop, you're going to put the value of A and B changing your H node and G node by using the design rules that I've shown earlier. So your controller will always be updated, okay? So how to do that? By having this identifier, or that identifier can actually identify the value of your A and B at all the time, maybe uh, every second, maybe every 10 minutes, or maybe every one hour, depending on your application. If your application related to vibration, for example, the one that the data that I give you, of course, you want to check the vibration information all the time, isn't it? You want to check it every millisecond. Okay, so the data uh, of your A and B will be utilized in recursively squared, for example, and updated every millisecond. Therefore, the value of your G note and H note, this is your G note, this is your H note, will also be updated all the time. Okay, it will always be updated according to the value of your A and B. All right, so this is the first uh, adaptive control, the simplest one, definitely, okay, for you to actually have a look and then uh, try to do some, uh, um, maybe play with it, okay, in terms of mathematics and all, okay. I will give you an example of past year questions that have this kind of uh, problem into it and then maybe you can solve it uh, later on, but not, but not uh, in the next two, three hours because I have another session of Viva uh, coming up. Okay, so do you have any question on that? I need to stop uh, the video now. Do you have any question for the for this first uh, adaptive control? Uh, the slide that I gave you earlier, there, there are also um, pole and regulator, isn't it? Um, okay, that part is not being covered yet. Okay, this part, I will talk about it uh, uh, later, not, not today. Okay, I don't have time for that one. All right, so 
Any questions so far with the first adaptive control for poll, assess, uh, for poll assignment? No questions? No Any question, Brock. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. okay. So maybe you can uh, maybe you can review. Uh, I will send the video later on. Uh, maybe you can review again the uh, the class so that you can actually try to make sense of what I've mentioned. Okay, uh, and for stability and also steady state error, maybe I will give you a, a separate uh, discussion on that. Okay, to just to make you recall again, what does it mean by stability of a system and what does it mean by uh, having the steady state error zero? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. thank you so much. I think that will be all for today. If you don't have any question, I know you need time to think of uh, some questions. Okay, so if you don't have any question for the time being. Uh, that will be all for today. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording video now.